Hello, happy Wednesday, September 7th. Yes, I'm sure some of you are probably like, well, what are you doing recording here? You're on vacation. Well, you know, there actually has been some Penguins news that has dropped, uh, at least, you know, in the last 24 hours that, you know, is worth discussing. Dave Molinari had a report about Jason Zucker on Pittsburgh Hockey Now that we're going to get into. The Penguins training camp roster has been dropped and also um, the Penguins uh, nationally televised schedule has been released um, for next season. So a few good topics to get into. Uh, for today's episode, sprinkled in with a couple of other things. That's all coming up right after this drop. Your Locked On Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. <clears throat> Excuse me. And thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So going this at about 6 o'clock on Wednesday evening, TBD if I'm going to post this um, this evening or tomorrow. If it is posted on Thursday, um, I'll just have another episode. Post it on Friday. I won't, I won't record another episode on Thursday. If I post tonight, on Wednesday night, uh, the next episode will be Friday. I'll just, so either way, I'm probably just going to take Thursday off and not record and then just record um, on Friday. It just all depends on which day I want to post this you know, just because I'm on vacation. But, um, you know, it's still good that I can give you all some Penguins content. Now it's been, um, I shouldn't say busy, but, you know, there has been some stuff that's come out. Um, and, you know, the first thing was, um, was well, actually the Penguins, they announced training camp and rookie camp rosters. They've invited 57 players to their 2022-2023 training camp. 30 forwards, 21 defensemen, six goaltenders. No, I am not going to go over that entire list. That would um, just take way too long. Um, just for the most part, you know, all 23 players who skated in at least one game for the Penguins last season. Um, a lot of players were down the minors. Of course, all the newcomers, Jeff Petrie, Ryan Paling, Ty Smith, Jan Ruta, um, and so all, 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 the, all those players, and again, of course, a lot of players down Wilkesbury. the Penguins will also have rookie training camp that starts next Thursday, September 15th. That's made up of 13 forwards, nine defensemen and three goaltenders. Uh, Jordan Frost is going to be there. Ty Glover, um, Jack St. Ivy, uh, Taylor Gauthier, um, and Owen Pickering, Nolan Collins. Um, and then 23 of the 25 rookie camp. Um, players who are going to be there are also going to remain in Pittsburgh to take part in Penguins training camp. Um, remember, the Penguins opened up the regular season on October 13th against the Arizona Coyotes. Training camp, though, that starts, um, if I'm going to get this right here, um, training camp officially opens Thursday, September 22nd. So officially two weeks now until camp opens up. You know, it's we're, we're into the home stretch of the offseason here, folks. It's It's getting... It's getting serious. You know, if I if I did live in Pittsburgh at this point, I'd probably be going up there to a few practices. Um, I don't know if I talked about this on my last episode, but um, I've been hinting out on my Twitter page that you know I'm not going to be renewing my lease down in Richmond um, later this year. And you know, one of the places that uh, I've been looking at is Pittsburgh. I would like to, you know, settle down there and potentially see if the show can get credentialed and go to a lot more games. You know, probably meet up some of you guys. Um, it's something that I'm really excited about and something that you know i'm really hoping to find a place here in the next few months um, and that also helps that i hopefully won't have to pay for espn plus which of course is going up um <clears throat> in money so <clears throat> again training camp starts thursday september 22nd all of the practices should be open to the public it's you know you're, you don't really have to pay that much to get in anyway if you are going to be there you know let me know you know tell me what day you're going tell me who practices well tell me who doesn't practice well all that good stuff. I know, you know, it's different in camp in the preseason compared to the regular season. Remember last year, because Barry Captain was blowing all of our doors off in camp and preseason, you know, looking like the second coming of Jesus. And then he just basically falls flat on his face during the regular season. Somehow still gets a decent contract from the Penguins, but still, you know, camp, you know, it, it, that, that stuff can be fickle. You know, there's always training camp heroes every single year. You know, we just have to, you know, I, I mean, we, I just have to, you know, pump the brakes on some stuff that at least I see from practices and, you know, reports and all that. Cause of course I'm not going to be there for that many practices. Um, at least not yet. Hopefully next year, if I'm, if I am living in Pittsburgh, I'll be able to go to a, a, almost all of them. 
But um, just wanted to just pump the brakes if people, you know, start if, if fans that aren't going start seeing reports like saying, hey, you know, this guy's been really flashy at camp and preseason, AK, okay, you know, <clears throat> just pump the brakes a little bit because, you know, we all saw what happened with capping and, um, and all that stuff um, last year. So um, that wraps up that part of the announcement. And um, just because I'm going to feel old here, Penguins, Crosby, Malkin, and Latang, they will return for their 17th season as teammates, the most among any trio in NHL history. That's just, it boggles my mind. That's their 17th season. You know, I'm going to be 25 here in um, <clears throat> basically two months. And the fact that they basically started playing when I was, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> eight or nine years old is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I, I, I just, I feel so young. Um, I, I feel so, I feel so young. I feel so old, but I also just feel so blessed to have, you know, watched them for 16 years. And, you know, this will be, you're 17 together. You know, it's just, it, it's unbelievable, um, to be honest with you. Um, wrapping up this segment, did want to touch on, I know I, I talked about Evan Rodriguez uh, on my Tuesday episode with you all. Um, Elliot Freeman, uh, he had his new 32 Thoughts podcast episode with Jeff Merrick, and he did release an update on Rodriguez, did not include the Penguins. So, you know, maybe um, Rodriguez's agent, Darren Ferris, was kind of maybe pumping Penguins tires up a bit much, but um, Friedman did say that he's heard the Ducks have a lot of interest in him. They could do something similar to what they did with John Klingberg, where they gave him a one-year deal at a decent salary, and then they could slip in at the deadline just because the, the Ducks aren't really expected to be a good team this year. He also said a couple Canadian teams are in on Rodriguez. He says he also expects something to um, potentially happen this week when it comes to Rodriguez. So <clears throat> anytime now on Wednesday for the rest of the day, maybe it'll be during my dinner tonight or when I'm just – trying to win in blackjack or something, or maybe Thursday, Friday, something like that. You know, with camp only two weeks away from most teams, I I have to expect he wants to get something done ASAP. But it sounds like um, there's a lot of interest around there in Rodriguez. I think he just wants to, you know, pick the best, you know, <clears throat> team for his future, his family, friends, all that stuff. So um, we'll have to see, you know, maybe he does come back to the Penguins. But, you know, after I listened to what Friedman was saying um, – on Tuesday, you know, doesn't really seem too likely right now. I know the Penguins obviously would have to clear cap for that to happen. So maybe um, they haven't been able to. And speaking of that, that's going to be the main topic coming up in the second um, segment of this episode. We're going to get into Dave Molinari's report regarding Jason Zucker and how the Penguins, you know, they could have traded him over the offseason, but they decided um, not to. So, yeah, that wraps up this first segment for today's episode with training camp um, and then the Evan, a small little update on Evan Rodriguez. But before we get to the wonderful second segment, I'm going to move my second lap. I have a beautiful double little setup here. Um, if you haven't tried the Bill Par Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. They're delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Bill has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs. They have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it plus it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. You can run to built.com and snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat, or you can finally uh, find a good hiding space and just hoard them for yourself. What's great about Build is that all of their bars are made with protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. You can go to Build.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. All right, I'm back in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. You want to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter, at LO. Underscore Penguins, and of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So <clears throat> let's get into Dave's story that he wrote, you know, right around, I think it was like 11, 12 o'clock today. Um, and he wrote that uh, Hextall got a trade proposal received from a, an unspecified team, believed to be from another Metropolitan team, called for Zucker to be packaged with a first round draft uh, choice in exchange for nothing. Basically, future considerations. And honestly, I am totally fine with the Penguins not making that deal. If you are going to move Zucker, I, I would at least want something in return. I'm not going to um, want future considerations for a player who, when healthy, is good, can score, good defensively, play, plays his ass off basically every shift. And I'm especially not going to be dumping him along with a first-round pick to a rival team. I, I don't know what team it is. You know, Maybe it's the Capitals. 
Maybe it's the Flyers. Maybe it's the Hurricanes. I don't know. I don't think it would be the Capitals or the Flyers. It's probably more likely it's the Hurricanes or the Islanders or something like that. Um, but the fact that they, they, they didn't do it, I'm fine with that. You know, Zucker, if you move him for nothing, who is going to play on that second line way? I mean, sure, Dan Hyden did it for parts of last year. And yeah, he played well. 18 goals, had a career high, looked good next to Malkin. But are you going to expect him to score 18 goals again this season for the Penguins? Probably not. I think you're looking at 12 to 15. I, I don't think he hits 20 again just because, you know, I mean, I, I know a good lot, a good chunk of them came at 5v5. But, you know, it's just I, I just, I just don't see it, especially for someone that's a depth player, basically. So, you know, I just I, I couldn't get behind him, especially again, if you're dealing a first round pick, something that Hextall has really valued ever since he took over uh, this team when Jim Rutherford resigned. You know, he easily could have moved that first round pick and this past year's draft. And heck, you know, I think a lot of Penguins and, you know, you know, analysts and writers and you know podcasters out there, you know, they were calling for the Penguins to trade that pick. And, you know, and I understood that thinking it's not going to be, you know, whoever they were going to pick, you know, even especially even Owen Pickering, you know, he's not going to be on this team probably for the next four to five years. So, you know, that was their thinking with trading. You can get someone that helps now, especially in the city and Gino era, because when Pickering is ready to go, I would, I would like to think that all three of Crosby, Malkin, and Letang are going to be retired. So I don't really like, you know, I, I, I get the reasoning, but you know, I, I also get where Ron Hextall is coming from, where he wants to, you know, restock the cupboard and get some prospects back into the system and think about the future and all this stuff. And I think, you know, he was thinking about the present, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and the future and not doing this, you know, um, maybe if you wanted to send Zucker West, I would have been maybe a little more open to it. But the fact remains, if you're if if it's from a metropolitan um, <clears throat> team, that's just that's just stupid, you know. It, it, that's just not worth it. And yeah, you know, this comes directly after we had the Sean Monahan trade, just about what <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago when he, you know, he was traded uh, to Montreal, and you know, the Flames they had to attach a first round pick to get the Canadians to take him. You know, if, if that's what it's going to take to get Sean Monahan, a player who. Is not as good right now as Jason Zucker. He used to he used to be better than him, but it's not anymore. Then of course Zuck, it's going to cost the Penguins at least a first round pick. Yeah, would it help them salary wise? Yes, it would clear them five point five million. It would allow them to maybe go after another free agent that you know is a bit more consistent, can stay healthy more often. But it's just it's not worth it to dump him and include a first round pick in it, and then you're not getting anything back in return. You know, it's not Ron Hextall's fault that, or even Jim Rutherford's fault when he got him that Zucker was going to be this banged up when you know he was acquired. I mean, he, this is a player that's it was healthy for most of his career prior to joining the Penguins. So you know, it's just it it really is. It's just it's the Penguins' luck that, of course, he gets banged up all the time. You know, every time he does, uh, you know, every time, you know, every time he basically steps on to the ice. Um, you know, I'm glad they kept him. I think, you know, I know Danny Shire of Deacon Pittsburgh Sports is, you know, pumping up his tires again. I know Jeff from the Pens blog is doing the same thing. I'm I'm almost there with him. You know, this is a player that I've really liked ever since he was acquired. I thought he was going to score 20 to 25 last year. Um, obviously, I know I was wrong. I'll take the L on that. I'll put that on my forehead. Um, but, you know, I'll – I may, I may go again here. You know, if he stays healthy this year, why can't he score 20 to 25? Well, why? He's done it before in Minnesota. Why can't he do it here with a rejuvenated Evgeny Malkin and another really good winger in Ricard Raquel? The Penguins are going to get hopefully 82 games out of him. Hopefully the team will be able to stay more healthy this year. They just they gutted, like I think, a lot of their conditioning staff over the offseason. Well, I wouldn't say that a lot of it, but they made some changes to it. So hopefully um, they can understand why this team is so healthy. Oh, why this team is so healthy. I just cannot speak right now. Why this team is so banged up year after year after year. Um, so that's basically the Jason Zucker part um, of this episode. And remember, you know, the Monaghan stuff, he had 6.3 million left on his contract and Zucker at 5.5. And the Flyers were trying to do the same thing with James Van Riesek. I think that's why they were not in on Johnny Goudreau because they couldn't get a team to take Van Reeves' contract. Well, it's either that or they didn't want to attach a first-round pick 
um, <clears throat> to get rid of him. And But the difference for that would be for me, like when you have a chance to go get Johnny freaking Goudreau, who is in your backyard, he is from the Philadelphia slash Cherry Hill, New Jersey area. Cherry Hill is like 20 minutes outside the city. Like, why wouldn't you just attach your first round pick and be done with it to try to go sign a player who can really help you now and in the future? You know, for the Penguins, you know, they, they wouldn't have you know that kind of luxury. They're, they're not going to go after Johnny Goudreau. Sure, sure they would they be able to sign someone to replace Hooker. Yeah, but you know, it, it's just it's not worth it to attach a first rounder, especially when a GM has been very public about saying, hey, I want to keep our, our first rounders. I don't want to keep dealing them. I think it honestly took a lot for Hextall to deal their second round pick this past year in the Ricard Raquel trade. I mean, it, he probably didn't want to do it, but you know, that's that's the market um, for this kind of stuff. And, and also, as Dave writes, they're not prepared to write Zucker off as a significant contributor. You know, this is a player, I thought he had a good playoffs for the Penguins. He, obviously, he was playing hurt. I was told he was playing with a torn groin by someone close to him. Um, I know a couple of other people heard that as well. But, you know, hopefully he's fully recovered from that and he comes out there and kicks butt for the Penguins this year. Um, now, the last part in Molinari's article that was really interesting, he said, although the 57-man training camp roster the Penguins released on Tuesday did not include anyone on a PTO, Brian Boyle was at least a long shot candidate to receive one until the last few days. He said, Boyle's representatives approached the Penguins about having him return for this year's training camp, and the idea got serious consideration before the front office decided against it. My thoughts on that, I totally understand why they did not want to give Boyle another contract. You know, he proved me wrong last year. I didn't think he was going to be, you know, anything more than just a 13th forward. He went out and scored double-digit goals and played over 50, uh, over half the games. I think it was like over 55 uh, um, of the games last season. You know, played fine in the playoffs. You know, obviously he, that, his style of play is not good against a team like the New York Rangers. But, you know, he he's still a fine player. But the fact of the matter is, as Dave writes, they have 14 forwards on one-year contracts right now. You know, the time to, you know, go a bit younger is now Drew O'Connor. I, I'm sorry, he's probably a better option right now than boy. Redeem Zahorna, Ryan Paling, you just got him in the trade with Jeff Petrie. They just signed Josh Archibald to a one-year contract. I don't want him playing every night because I don't think he's any good. Um, but, you know, they have him also. So, you know, Jake, Jake Kajula, of course, uh, that's a two-way contract. But still, you know, he's a player that I think could push for playing time this season. They have a lot of options for those 11th, especially that 12th forward spot that are better at this point in time than Boyle. I think he also just had knee surgery over the offseason. I'm not really sure how healthy he's going to be coming off that. I am totally fine with the Penguins um, not giving Boyle another contract. You know, kudos to him. Had a great year at the Penguins. Obviously was very well liked and respected in the locker room. Proved me wrong. Proved a lot of people wrong. But I think at this point, I think it's just too little, too late for them to bring him in. <clears throat> now, that wraps up this second segment for today's episode. Coming up the final segment, we're going to get into the national TV games that were announced today and how many games the Penguins will be playing um, on national TV next year. So that's all coming up right after this commercial break. All right, I'm back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. You want to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter, LA Marshall Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So <clears throat> let's get into this. So <clears throat> both TNT and ESPN, <clears throat> Turner Sports, I should say, they announced their national TV game schedule today. Another sign that hockey is right around the corner, almost about a full month now until the season comes back. And trust me, I am amped. I am over the offseason. I cannot wait to get back to, you know, doing this five days a week during the season. I know it's a lot. It's hectic, but it's what I live for. I, I love covering this team, and I'll, I'll be doing this show for as long as I can. But the Penguins, so they will have on national TV 15 games over the course of this next season. That is tied for the most in the NHL alongside the New York Rangers and the Minnesota Wild. Um, AT&T Sportsnet, for those that are in Pittsburgh or for those that have ESPN+, Plus, I mean, I currently have it right now, but I'm probably not going to have it You know, if, if I do move to Pittsburgh at the end of this year. Um, they are going to broadcast 69, nice number, Penguin games this year. Yes, I had to throw that in. <clears throat> so here are the games that are going to be broadcasted across the networks uh, nationalized for the Penguins. Tuesday, so two games on ESPN, Tuesday, November 1st against the Boston Bruins. That's 8 p.m. start time. Thursday, March 23rd against the Dallas Stars down in Dallas. Now for ABC with some matinee games. So they have six games on ABC, 
February 25th against the St. Louis Blues and St. Louis. March 11th on that Saturday versus the Philadelphia Flyers. March 18th against the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. March 25th against the Washington Capitals at home. April 1st against the Boston Bruins at home. And then April 8th against the Detroit Red Wings at Little Caesars Arena. And then for TNT. So they have seven games on TNT. That's tied for the most with the Rangers. Uh, Wednesday, November 2nd against the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, November 9th against the Washington Capitals. Uh, November 25th, Black Friday against the Philadelphia Flyers. All three of those games are on the road. And then <clears throat> December 28th versus the, the Detroit Red Wings. Winter Classic on January 2nd uh, up in Boston at uh, Fenway Park. March 12th against the New York Rangers at home. And then March 22nd against the Colorado Avalanche. So those are all uh, 15 nationally televised games for the Penguins this year. So after a year where they weren't on as many, you know, there weren't as many national TV games, Penguins, they go up that list in a big way. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to those. You know, I, I honestly, you know, for me, I like TNT's coverage more than ESPN's last year. I think ESPN was fine. I mean, Ray Ferraro's awesome. Sean McDonough, he's not a natural, but, you know, he, he's, he's been really, usually really good with football and, and, you know, college football over the years. I think that was his first year doing hockey. He's going to, I think, grow more and, and mold himself into it. I think he's going to be fine. Um, Bob Wachuskin, I think he's really solid. You know, he had a really, you know, just a natural voice for the game. John Butchgrass, never really been a fan of him. He's just a, a weird dude. I know a lot of people like him. I'm just, no, not not for me, uh, to say the least. And especially his whole chicken parm thing is just like, this is my reaction for those on YouTube. That's that that's me when it comes to the chicken parm stuff. It's just like, okay, whatever. Leah Hextall, look, you know, I think, you know, objectively, this has nothing to do um, with her being a woman. I would say the same thing if she was a man, you know, just did not have a good feel for the game as a play-by-play -play, uh, commentator. I think she should have taken more reps maybe down in the minor league or something like that before she was put on ESPN. I think she was honestly just set up to fail right from the start. Um, maybe she worked on some stuff over the offseason, but you know, I'm definitely not looking forward to those games. I like her better as a color commentator than I do as a play-by-play -play analyst. I mean, she's just objectively not a good play-by-play uh, commentator right now, and I don't know if she ever will be. You know, if she if she proves me wrong, great. You know, I think this this sport <clears throat> again. You know, they need it needs more women in it that you know know what they're doing and are good at it and all that stuff. Especially again in a very male driven industry. You know, TNT. I thought you know their intermission panels were actually solid. You know, I think they took it right from inside the NBA. Uh, Rick talk. It was always hilarious. Um, Anson Carter. Eh, you know, his analysis is okay. Wayne Gretzky. Um, he is basically has the personality of um, a lump of bricks, but I could also say the same for Mark Messier and Chris Chelios on ESPN. I think, honestly, they are worse than Gretzky. At least you know Gretzky is able to talk. I mean, Messier and Chelios, they, they, they just mumble the whole time, and it's just, like, not fun to listen to. Um, <clears throat> Liam McHugh, obviously a great host. Um, I, I love listening to him. Um, you know, just, you know, I've always been a fan of Kenny Albert. Um Darren Pang, I think he's fine, except I remember that game. It was the Blues Penguins game last year. And it was just a constant, it was just a constant homer fest. Like, I get it. You know, you do games for the Blues at home. I don't think you need to shove that down our throats. Um, so, again, I, I, I'm probably more looking forward to the games on TNT than I am um, with ESPN slash ABC. Maybe ESPN or ABC, maybe they make some changes to the broadcasting teams this year, something like that. Who knows? But, um, that was the big announcement today. Um, ESPN, they're, they're going to kick their coverage off on opening night. They will have a double header, and I'm going to get that for you all right now. Tampa Bay, New York on October 11th at 7.30. Vegas, Los Angeles on the 11th. And then Turner Sports, if I can get that up here. Uh, let me make sure they made that announcement. Um, on the on Wednesday, October 12th, Bruins Capitals as a double header, and then the Avalanche will raise their Stanley Cup banner against the Chicago Blackhawks at 9:30. I believe this is when that starts. Let me make sure, yeah, 9:30. So yeah, I mean, this just you know, I'm fired up. You know, we got basically, um, I think what tomorrow, I think we'll mark. Yeah, it's basically five weeks from now, Yens, that the season is starting. It's it's gonna fly by so quick. You know, especially with the NFL season starting on Thursday, September 8th. You know, once that gets going. The rest of the month of the September is going to fly by. Training camp is going to be here a couple weeks. And, you know, I'm just I'm, – I'm so excited for it. But that wraps up this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. Let me know what you all thought down in the YouTube comments. You can also send me DMs and all that stuff. You know, should the Penguins have brought in someone on a PTO? What do you think of the Evan Rodriguez um, 
new rumor from Elliot Freeman. And also, what do you think of Dave Molinari's report about Jason Zucker? Would you have made that trade to an unspecified Metro team, or would you have kept him and hope that he rebounds for this upcoming season? So again, that wraps this one up. I will talk with you all um, either on Thursday, uh, either, well, I'll talk with you all on Friday uh, for sure. This episode is going to be posted either Wednesday night or on Thursday. The last episode of the week will be posted on Friday. So hope you have a great rest of your next couple of days and I'll talk to you all on Friday.